Alright, so this is the first lecture on maths 241 Ordinary Differential Equations ODE and the first topic is First Order Differential Equations First Order Differential Equations Now, what is the First Order Differential Equation? The First Order Differential Equation, first of all, is a differential equation That is, it contains differentials of a particular variable Secondly, it is what? First order. That means the highest order of the differentials in that equation is 1. I'll give you an example. y prime plus 2y minus 3x equals 0. This is an example of the first order differential equation. Why is it so? First of all, it's a differential equation in that it contains, first of all, an independent variable, x, independent. Secondly, it contains independent variable, y. And thirdly, it contains a differential. A differential. A differential. Now, of course, you are used to dy dx, right? dy dx. Now, you can write dy dx as what? y prime. So, this is a what? Differential. So, for me to write y prime here, it means what? The differential of what? y. The first differential of y. Now, since it is 1, since the highest differential here, of course, you can't see any other differential here. So, since the highest differential here is 1, therefore, this is a first order differential equation. So, our business in this class is to solve a very, very simple question on differential equations. First order differential equations. Now, we'll start with the very easy, a very easy objective question. Sorry. Um, a very easy word problem question. Now. So the question goes thus, if the population of a country doubles in 50 years, in how many years will the population triple under the assumption that the rate of growth is proportional to the number of inhabitants? The first statement is that the rate of growth, the rate of growth is directly proportional to the number of inhabitants. What is the rate of growth? The rate of growth is the increase, the increase in number of inhabitants per time. Now, if we decide to denote the number of inhabitants by y, so inhabitants, inhabitants will be y. So the rate of increase of the rate of growth rather is proportional to the number of inhabitants. So if the number of inhabitants is y, then the rate of growth uh, will be the change in number of inhabitants with change in time. So that will be change in y, okay? Change in y, dy over dt. dy over dt. So this is changing number of inhabitants with change in time. So dy over dt. Now, dy over dt is what? Directly proportional. That is the change in the population with time. Directly proportional to what? The number of inhabitants at that particular time. So we have this. Now, I want you to recall from your direct variation that this will be equal to dy over dt. Direct um, dy over dt will be equal to what? K Y D Y over D T we go to K Y. Now, because we have this, how do we go about solving this equation? 
Now, this is the first new thing I'm bringing to the forefront in this topic. What do we do? We have to make sure we bring all the Ys together. We have dy here, we have y here. So we bring all the y's together. How do we do that? We do a sort of cross multiplication. Okay? So a sort of cross multiplication. Like we are used to in our secondary school algebra. So we do cross multiplication. So we have dy times 1 being equal to ky times dt. Okay? But I said the goal is to do what? To have y, all the y's, on one side. So we do dy over y equals k dt. So we have dy over y equals k dt. Now, our aim is to find the number of years, our aim is to find the number of years in which the population will triple. Okay, so we are looking for what? The number of years, which is t. Okay, and we can see t in our equation. But first of all, in any differential equation in which you are supposed to find a particular variable, you must find y first, okay? So we aim to find y. So what do you do at this point? We integrate both sides. We take the integral of both sides. Okay, so we have this. Okay, so we take the integral of both sides. So integral of dy over y equals integral of k dt. We did the integration on both sides for it to be correct. Now, when you integrate dy over y, remember that integral of 1 over y is what? Lean y. Lean meaning natural logarithm. So this is what? Lean y equals what? Now, when we integrate, k is a constant, okay? So k, k will come outside. So we have k integral of what? dt. Okay, so because of that, we have lean y equals kt. But is it just kt? No, it's not just kt. Now, when we integrate, I'm sure you must have done that in math 1 to 1. When you integrate a function and you have written the answer, don't forget to write your constant. Now, our constant here is what? c. Our constant is c. But we don't just write c. We write what? Lean C. We write lean C. I will show you why I, I wrote lean C here instead of C. Now, lean C is the natural logarithm of just a normal number, okay? So, lean C will still be a constant. C is a constant, lean C is a constant. You see the reason why lean C is more appropriate to use here as our constant. Now, don't forget our aim is to find y. So what do we do at this point? We want only y on this side, so we want to isolate y. So we want this natural logarithm, this lean, we want it to go away. How do we go about this? We take the exponent of both sides. So e raised to power lean y equals e raised to power kt plus lean c. So because of this, we have what? Now, e raised to power the y, the y will come down to the back. So it seems as though e cancels the lean. So y equals what? Now here, what happens here? Remember that whenever you raise a number to a power, it is the same thing as saying e raised to power kt times e raised to power lean c. Recall this from your what from your indices okay indices e raised to power a plus b equals e raised to power a times e raised to power b okay and like i said here the e we cancel the lean so e here will also cancel this lean here okay so we have
So we have y equals e raised to power kt times e raised to the power lean c. Now, like I said, the e here will cancel the lean. So we have y equals e raised to the power kt times c. Okay, it goes times c. So y equals what? C e raised to the power kt. <coughs> So y equals c e raised to the power kt. Now when you solve ordinary differential equations, you usually get to this point. Now this c is a constant. C is a constant. K is also a constant. Okay, k is also a constant. Our t there is time. Time is a variable. Okay? Y is also a variable which is a dependent variable, okay, which we then define. Now, first of all, we were told at the beginning of the question, that the population of the country doubles in 50 years. It doubles in 50 years. So that means when t is 50, okay, that means our y will be equal to what? Two times the initial population, okay? Y naught is the what? Initial population. Initial population. Okay, the initial population. Now, I open this class first of all. We assume that there is a number of people in this class. So there are a number of people rather in this class already. So why cause what? Why not? The initial population. Why cause why not? At the beginning. Then with time, with time the population increases. Okay. So let's substitute the first set of Conditions one, we made this one two. So let's substitute it inside this equation. So we have y. Now y is y naught, of course. So y naught equals what? C, which is unknown, times e raised to the power, what's our k? Unknown also. And t is what? Zero. So at that point, at the beginning of that whole population issue, y naught, that is the initial population equals c times what? Now, e raised to power, k times 0 is 0. So, e raised to power 0 is 1, okay? So, that's c times 1. So, why not? Equals what? c. So, the initial population is actually equal to what? c. So, that constant that we have here is actually the initial population, which we use. So, from this step now, we can say that y equals what? c and c raised to the power kt. Okay, this is a general equation now. But then we discovered already that our y not, our y not equals our c. So instead of putting c here, we have our what? y not here. Okay, so from the first case, from the first case of it's taking 50 years, 50 years, for the population to what double, we have what t equals 50 years and y being equal to y not times 2. Population to double. Population to double. Time the population to double 50 years. So we have what? Y is what? Y not times 2 equals what? Y not is already y not, which are c times e raised power what? k times 50. Okay, so that gives us. 2y naught equals y naught times, now, e raised to power what? 50k, because k times 50 is 50k. Okay? So, dividing both sides by y naught, we have what? 2 equals e raised to power 50k. So, I've established this now. This is equation 3. I've established this. The next thing we'll do is this. We will now find 
we will find the value of k. Okay? From here, we can find the value of k. So it equals us power 50k. Now, of course, we can find our k here. Remember I said c and k are constants. And we must find all the constants in our differential equation. Okay, so we we'll find our k as well. You know where we have found our c already? As why not? So our next aim is to find our k. So we we'll do what? We take the natural logarithm of both sides. Because we want to isolate k. So we look for a way to bring k out of this whole mess here. So we we'll take the natural logarithm of both sides. So lean 2 equals the e raised power 50k. So like I said, lean and e, they cancel each other. Okay, so we have lean 2 being equal to what? 50k. And k being equal to what? Lean 2 over 50. So k is lean 2 over 50. Now, in the next step, what will I do? Now, we said how long does it take for the population to triple? So, the third case we are considering is for the population to triple. And when the population triples, what happens? Y becomes what? Three times what? The initial population. And our time is what? Unknown. Now, why am I always writing Y and T only? Because they are the what? Variables. They are the variables. Okay? So now I'm always using them for every case I'm considering. Now, substituting them back in our equation, our equation is y equals c e raised power kt, right? And we know already that what? our c equals y naught and our k equals what? Lean 2 divided by 50. So we substitute all this and it will help us move forward. So we have three y naught being equal to what? C, which is y naught, okay, times e raised to power k t. And what's our k? Lean 2 over 50 times t. Now, what do we have here next? We need to find our t. This is the time. This is the time that it takes for the population to triple. How do we find it? First of all, on this side, we don't want y not to be on this side. So what do we do? We divide both sides by y not. So we have three y not over y not being equal to e raised to power lean 2 over 50 times t. Next, we don't want this, e, this whole e issue. So what do we do? First of all, of course, we divide this. Then we take natural log into both sides. So we have what? Lean 3 equals what? Lean e raised to the power lean 2 over 50 times t. Okay? And I told you that lean cancels e. So the lean cancels e, and this guy, the whole of this, comes down. So we have lean 3 being equal to lean 2 over 50 times t. So evidently, we need to remove lean 2 and 50 from here. How do we do that? We cross multiply. Or we divide both sides by what? Lean 2 over 50. So that gives us what? Lean 3 times 50 over lean 2, giving us our time. So t equals lean 3 over lean 2 times 50. So t equals what? Now our lean 3 is what? 1.0986 and lean 2 is what? 0 0.6931 times 15. So our t from here is 79.25 years. 79.25 years. So if you want to approximate this to the nearest year, it will be t equals 79 years. So we have found the time it takes for the population to triple. Now, under differential equations, first order, we just dealt with them. This is a very quick recap. So we said that 
the what makes them ordinary differential equations of the first order is that there is only one that means sorry it means the highest order in the equation is one okay so you can't have more than y prime there so you can't have more than y prime there okay so that's what makes it first order what makes it differential is because it has a differential that is a y prime or a y prime prime in it so with these steps i'll be able to solve the question i going to find the time it takes for the population to triple this can be applied to finding the rate of growth of bacteria rate of growth of many other things the population growth and all other stuff thank you